Hey, it's Doug Murray, principal of Chardon High School. I know things have been a real crazy this year uh, with COVID-19 and all the restrictions and all the changes. And this presentation is different also. Um, we've been asked to do it digitally and create this video for you to help you in the scheduling process. In today's video, you are going to be hearing from guidance counselors who are gonna to talk to you about not only the graduation requirements, uh, but also the, the process for using Infinite Campus of how to select your courses and all different eligibilities. Uh, later on in your presentation, you're gonna hear from other counselors that are gonna to talk to you specifically about your courses for your grade level. Appreciate you. I wish we could do this in person and know that I'm always there for you. If you ever need to touch base, come on and down and see Mr. Bandera, Mr. Heim, myself, and we'll help you through this process or just help you in general. And without further ado, here's Mrs. Hetrick. I'm Mrs. Hetrick, and I'm one of the guidance counselors here. Um, we want to welcome you to the 21-22 scheduling presentation. We're going to talk about several things that you need to know before you make your course selections for next year and get you ready to register online for courses. So Mr. Hurlbut and I are going to be talking for a few minutes here about the general things that you need to know as far as the scheduling process and what's going to be happening over the next couple of weeks. So first of all, um, the curriculum night presentation on February 11th is posted on the guidance page of the website and it's available in Week in Reflection. And that's that presentation is going to talk about all of the curriculum courses. It's going to describe the departments, the electives in the departments. The program of studies is also available to you through Week in Reflection and through the guidance page of the website. And if you really want a print copy of the program of studies, we can also um, print you a copy. So there's plenty of ways to get the information that you need to get from us. So even though we're doing these presentations virtually, there are plenty of resources. And with students back in the building 100% of the time now, you can certainly come down to guidance at any given time and talk to um, myself, Mr. Hurlbut, Mr. Kovach, and Mrs. Tupaz and we'll answer your questions anytime. So I'm gonna start off with a quick overview at, as far as what you need to know. Um, same, this is the same for every student at every grade level as far as graduation requirements. And you can see on the screen that I have in front that you, um, you need four English credits, four math credits, including an Algebra two, three science credits, and then in social studies, you need three total credits, but you need one world history, one U.S. history, and one government credit. Health, you need one half credit to graduate, and that's a semester. And then in phys ed, you need a half credit or two semesters of phys ed, because each semester of phys ed is worth a quarter credit. Or if you are in a sport, marching band, um, cheerleading, you can also use the PE waiver, but you must have two seasons of whatever that is. You can mix and match a sport. You could participate in volleyball and track and have two seasons. Or you could participate in volleyball two years in a row and have your two seasons. But it does have to be two seasons in order to use the PE waiver. So I'm gonna switch over here um, next to honors diploma requirements because a lot of you are often asking about that. It's a little more stringent as far as honors diploma, um, but it in, does also include, um, you know, the graduation requirements just plus a little bit more. Um, and then I'm also, along with this, because these honors diploma requirements also tie into what the colleges recommend. So I'm gonna kind of address both here at the same time. So first of all, the colleges really expect to see you take four years in all of your core subjects. They wanna see at least one fine art, and you can see that on the screen here for Honors Diploma. They wanna see at least two to three years of a world language as well. And so if you kind of run through and you see the on my screen, four credits of English, four credits of math, four credits of science, for honors diploma, 
um, four credits in social studies, three credits of a world language, one credit in fine arts, and then either a 3.5 accumulative GPA or a 27 on an ACT or a 1280 on an SAT. Um, and I noticed this screen here says chemistry and physics. Now we have so many lab sciences, there are exceptions to the chemistry and physics and the um, AP bio would count also, the AP environmental would also count for that as well. But these pretty much do mirror what the colleges wanna see you graduate with as well. So if you're college bound, as far as the courses go, we're always going to push you to take a fourth year and continue in all these courses each year. Um, and that's a topic if you, at, on any given year, are working towards an honor diploma, honors diploma, we want to make sure that you are talking with us and that we're not only monitoring your graduation progress, but we're also monitoring your progress towards your honors diploma. So ask us, talk to us. We obviously are going to be back on track this year. Once the scheduling process, once we get further in the process, we're going to meet with everybody this year. Last year was a unique situation with being at home that we really didn't get an opportunity to meet with every student. But we will meet with you this year to go over scheduling requests and talk about your courses as well. And again, I can't reiterate enough, stop down and talk to us anytime. All right, eligibility. There's a change here. And we want to make sure that you're paying attention to this. And this also goes into your scheduling considerations because you need to make sure you have enough courses and we, you need to be aware that um, the GPA has changed. So at any given time, to, in order to be eligible, so in other words, fourth quarter of this year, if you want to be eligible for first quarter of next year, you have to be in five full value courses. You cannot have any Fs. And here's the big change. You must earn a GPA of a 2.0 in the quarter that the previous quarter. So if you want to be eligible for fall, fourth quarter of this year, you cannot have any Fs. You must have at least a 2.0. You must be in your five full value classes. So that's very important to keep in mind. That's a significant change moving in moving forward with eligibility. And we're going to be monitoring that as closely as we can, but you have to be responsible for paying attention to that as well. You need to always know how many classes you're in. You have to be in five classes the previous quarter in order to be eligible, and you have to be in five classes when you are participating in any activity. Keep in mind, this also applies not only to sports, but it applies to all activities that you might be involved in. Again, if you have questions, make sure you're asking us. You can email us at any time, stop down. As you notice, I'm gonna say that over and over and over again because it's very important that we the communicate. The actual process of the sure. online scheduling. So as we've been doing for the last four or five years, the scheduling process is gonna be done entirely online through Infinite Campus for all of our students except for these seventh graders moving up to the high school. So the way that this works, and you're gonna see on the screens coming up in just a moment, that students are gonna to need to log into their Infinite Campus account they're going to click on the course registration tab. That course registration tab is going to be found under the more tab, which is located at the very bottom on the left hand side of your infinite campus account. From there, students are going to search for the courses that they're interested in, and then they're going to add them to their course request. So I'm going to move to the next screen and so you can kind of have a better understanding of what this looks like. So as you can see, this is a sample of what a student's infinite campus account will look like. Once they find that more located at the bottom, they're going to see a tab that says course registration. From there, that is where they're going to pick and choose what courses they want to take next year. Teachers will have already recommended the core courses for these students. This is your English, math, science, social studies, and world language. The teachers actually do the recommendations or the registration for those students. The big question is, well, what if the teacher recommended something that's different from what I want? For example, maybe you are interested in the honors and the teacher did not recommend you, or you're not interested in the honors and the teacher recommended you for it. 
So what is that process? So the first step uh, when you see that is going to have to do with talking with your teacher. After you've talked to the teacher, and I'm going to get to another screen in just a moment. Actually, let's just skip right there. So that override process. So after you have spoken with your teacher in regards to that required course that you see in Infinite Campus, you need to have a conversation about them about whether you feel you're okay with it and what do you want to do. The teacher can then go in and change that recommendation, or they can just choose to stick with their recommendation. The teacher has the right to do either one of them. They're really trying to put you in the best position to be successful. However, if you still disagree with whatever recommendation the teacher put in Infinite Campus for those core courses, after you've had that conversation, you're allowed to do one of these recommendation override forms. This is exactly what it looks like on the screen right now. These paper override forms are available in guidance. Stop on down and pick one up. You're going to need to essentially let us know what you are recommended for, let us know what you would rather have, and have a parent sign off on it. The reason we have a parent sign off on it as well is, again, as a teacher, they're doing their job to try to put the student in the best position to be successful um, using the information they had. But again, we understand that it's not always exactly what the students really want to do. So there is a process for you to kind of override what that teacher has put in there. So as I mentioned back on this screen, when a student logs into Infinite Campus, they're going to see the required courses that the teachers put in. Your job as a student is to pick requested and alternate courses. You will search for these courses based upon the title of the course. All the students are going to be given these registration forms and it's going to have um, a list of the courses that are available. It's going to have some scheduling things on the back. Those will be distributed in about a week to each class. You'll search a course by the name of the class. So if you, for instance, if you're interested in pottery, you're going to start typing in P-O-T-T, -T, hit enter, and eventually the course is going to pop up as well as a description of the course so you have a better understanding about what that course is about. You need to make sure that you've requested a minimum of six credits of classes, and this includes what your teachers have recommended. Once you have those six classes, that's six classes in one study hall, you also need to make sure you have an alternate course or two listed, especially if you are a junior or a senior when it comes to your English literature. I'm going to talk about that on the very last screen. But please make sure you have at least one, if not two, alternate electives picked. We do the best we can to get you in the courses you want, but it's not always possible. We talked about the override. And then some final scheduling considerations. And let's me move to me. So things that you need to ask yourself. One, do I have six credits of classes? Two, do I have at least one, if not two, alternate courses listed? You'll see the note there about juniors and seniors. Juniors and seniors, you must request an English literature option, and you need to have at least one alternate literature option with the examples you'll see right there. Third, did I request a CCP class? It's a different process if you're looking at doing College Credit Plus, um, and you need to make sure that you're following that process. You need to be accepted into these CCP courses by the end of the year in order to stay in those classes and take them. And lastly, think about your PE waiver. Did you turn one in? If not, are you taking your phys ed or have you done your phys ed? Um, those are typical things that we tell students to really consider. And as Ms. Hetrick said multiple times, please stop down and see us if you have any questions or concerns in regards to this process. Please do not be one of the 200 plus students that we have to track down to pick their courses. This is one of the few opportunities you get to really dictate what classes you're going to take next year. Um, and if you hold off and you don't do that process in a timely fashion, you might not have a seat available in the elective you want. So it's very important that you're doing this scheduling process right away when it opens up in about one week for you guys, okay? Lastly, this is just the counselor information. Please reach out to us. Parents, if you have questions, email us. Students, stop down and see us. We are more than happy to answer any questions in regards to the scheduling process. Um, look forward to hearing from you guys and look forward to everybody getting their courses in the Infinite Campus as soon as that window opens up on the 19th. You're going to also hear next from Mr. Kovach and Mrs. Tupaz a little bit for each grade level. 
So they're going to talk specifically about scheduling for your ninth grade courses if you're an eighth grader. So you will hear that portion next in this video. And we're going to sign off and um, hopefully we'll see you in our offices soon. Hello, my name is Kyle Kovach. I am one of the school counselors at the high school for grades 8 through 12, letters P through Z. Uh, this is for the current eighth graders, next year's ninth graders. This is your scheduling presentation that hopefully answers any and all questions you have. If by chance you have any questions or something was not answered, feel free to reach out to me, Mr. Hurlbut, Mrs. Hetrick, or Mrs. Tupez. We will happily help you with anything you need. So the first thing we're going to cover, required courses. So if you look at this slide, there are some required courses you have to take next school year. First will be English, Math, Science, and Social Studies. These courses will actually be recommended by your current teachers in those subjects. So your current eighth grade teachers will recommend you for your English, Math, Science, and Social Studies class. So you do not need to actually put those into IC. They will do it for you. If you have any questions or you want to talk about recommendations or what class you would like to take, please talk to your teachers and they'll be happily try to make sure that they put you in the best class so you'll be successful. Also, make sure you took health or physical education. I know some of you guys had the opportunity to take health and if that happened, that's great. And some of you guys may have had the opportunity to take physical education. Um, the state of Ohio requires students in order to graduate to take health and physical education to graduate. You need a half a credit of health and a half credit of physical education. The physical education is broken down into quarter credits, so each class you take is actually 0.25. You need to get a half a credit, so you'll actually have to take two years of a physical education or two physical education courses. If you play a sport or you're in the band or another activity that you can get a PE waiver, you could stop down to the guidance office we can get you a pe waiver so you do not have to take physical education but make sure you take health and pe if you aren't getting a PE waiver because as you get older and you're in 10th 11th and 12th grade fitting the health and pe in your schedule can be difficult so please get those out of the way because those are requirements in order to graduate you could have a 4.0 and have a perfect score on your act but if you don't have the half credit of health or half credit of physical education you will not graduate so looking at some of the courses that you could take, so this course, you're going to get a course sheet in the next coming days, a piece of paper, and this has all the courses you are eligible to take as a ninth grader next year. You will see some sections, for example, these are the science courses that you could take next school year. Your teacher will recommend you. You could either be in physical science, physical science honors, or biology honors if you are already in physical science honors as an eighth grader. Like I said, if you have any questions, please speak to your teacher about those recommendations. For social studies, every eighth grader is in social studies eight. These are the courses that your current social studies teacher will recommend for you. Modern world history, modern world history honors, or AP human geography. Moving forward, if you look at math, you like I said, you're going to have to take a math class. It's required. These are the math classes that your current teacher will recommend for you. Fundamentals of Algebra 1, Algebra 1, Geometry Honors, if you're currently in Algebra 1 Honors, or Algebra 2 Honors, if you're currently in Geometry Honors as an 8th grader. And last but not least, your English. Like I said, you will have to take an English course. These are the English courses you'll be recommended for. English 1 College Prep CP, or English 2 Honors. Like I said before, make sure you have a conversation with your teacher about those recommendations before they recommend you if you have any questions or you could talk to your guidance counselor but we always say the best person to talk to is your current teacher because they know your strengths and weaknesses and all these main subject areas so they usually know best and recommend you for what you'll be successful in but if you have any questions make sure you talk to your teacher first courses and considerations so students are expected to enroll in a minimum of six classes per semester what that means is as you know we have seven periods in our school day so out of those seven periods six of them you should have a class okay why we say this because we want you to have six classes and we always recommend a student to take a study hall for that seventh period so make sure you have a study hall we think it's great to work on some homework to have some social time and to just kind of be in a different environment than a class. But if you want to take seven classes, that's up to you and your parent, and you're welcome to do so. But we highly recommend that you take at least six. We do not want you to take five or less. Students should be 
students are required to enroll in a minimum of five full value courses. What that means is we want you to take six courses, but you should be in at least five full value or five credits per year. What that means is you should be in five classes no matter what. Hopefully, we want you to be in six, but you have to be in five. What that means is this keeps you on track for graduation. You need 20 credits, as you know, uh, to graduate from high school. Taking five per year, five times four equals 20. So we want you to do that so you stay on pace. Some of you guys actually probably got some high school credit in eighth grade, which is awesome. But make sure you still at least take those five classes because also for eligibility concerns. If you're going to play sport, if you're going to be in the band, if you're going to be in the musical, any extracurricular, you need to pass five classes, not including gym. So don't think you could take your four cores in gym and you'll be okay. Make sure you take five full value courses, either a full credit or a half credit. Pick electives based upon potential career interests. So please pick electives based on what you'd want to do in the future or your overall interest. Don't pick electives just because your friends are taking them or specific teachers. I mean, those are things to think about, but the main reason you should pick these classes is it's something you want to do in the future or something you really like. And last but not least, this is very important why it's in bold, pick at least two alternate slash backup courses to follow for scheduling conflicts and flexibility. So what this means is as a counselor, I have to be honest, we get your scheduling forms and we want to put you in the classes you choose. But sometimes classes could be full. Maybe a section doesn't run because we don't have enough students. So we can't offer you the classes you choose as your first electives. That's why we want you to pick two alternate courses. So if you can't get into your first option, we could at least get you into your second option of what you would like to take because we want you to be in a schedule that one, you like to interest you and three will set you up for success if you don't have those alternates if you try to sign up at a later date in the summer other classes fill up and kind of your options are not many so please make sure you have two alternate courses so we can put you in courses you want to take next if you're planning on going to college there's certain courses you have to think about to enhance your college opportunities so you have more options to go through if you plan on going to college, plan on taking English, math, science, and social studies all four years. The reason we say this is because when you go to college, you're probably going to have to take these subjects as well. And we want to make sure you don't have an off year. So once you go to college, you're kind of, your tools are sharpened so you can be successful. Also, think about advanced, advanced placement courses, also called AP courses, honors courses, or CCP courses moving forward. Um, CCP courses stand for College Credit Plus, and those are technically college classes. So if you are planning on going to college, maybe not next year if you don't think you're ready because you're going to be in ninth grade, but moving forward, think about AP, think about honors, think about CCP because it's going to challenge you so you're more successful later. Three, think about taking at least two to three years of a foreign language. Most colleges, um, not all colleges, some colleges require a foreign language, some don't. But what we know as counselors, your best chance to get into a college is if you actually take your foreign language. So please take that foreign language so you have the best opportunity to get into your college. Next, try to take a fine art course, a visual art, music, drama. This just shows that you are more well-rounded so you can get into more schools. And it makes you think a little differently. Five, select electives related to your future career and educational plans. We already talked about that. Pick courses you want to take because your interests are something you think you want to do in the future. And six, it kind of ties into five, an in-depth learning in an area. What that means is if you're thinking about being a historian, take a bunch of history electives. If you're thinking about going into the sciences or the medical field, maybe you want to take more science courses. If you're thinking about going to art school, take more art courses. So try to take courses that interest you and get a more in-depth understanding so you are as well-polished and as smart in a subject. So when you go to college, you are going to be successful. Auburn Career Center. So when you, if you're planning on going to Auburn, just a few things I'll touch base on this. You apply next at this time next year in your 10th grade year. The main thing I want you to understand is make sure you have a full schedule. Make sure you have your Englishes in there, math, science, social studies, but also make sure you have health and PE completed if that's what you're thinking about doing. Um, just make sure you do that so Auburn, because they need to make sure you're on path for graduation. So make sure you get your health, your PE electives, and make sure that you take those six courses. So once you are planning on going to Auburn, it's an easy transition. CCP. If you're planning on taking a CCP class, we offer some in-house, like the business ethics class and the CCP business class that you'll see on your scheduling sheet. There's a few things you have to do, because those are technically Lakeland classes, but they're taught by Ashard teachers. 
So if you want to follow these steps on the screen, watch the, the recording of the CCP information. They'll tell you any information you need to, know, need to know. And that was posted, I think, on the program of studies, as well as the week of reflection. So you can look for that there. Step two, complete the intake, the intent form by April 1st. That just tells us that you're planning on doing it so we could have an idea. Step three, complete a CCP application and request transcripts from the high school to be sent to the schools you wish to apply to. So if you're thinking about going to Lakeland or if you're taking a class in-house, you have to apply for the CCP application at that school. So even if you're taking, for example, if you're taking the business class, you have to apply to Lakeland because that's actually a Lakeland course and request your transcripts. We'll send it to Lakeland so you could actually enroll in the class. And step four, if needed, register for an AccuPlacer test. So with you guys being in ninth grade, most likely you didn't take your ACT. So you'll have to take the AccuPlacer test. Basically, you have to get a certain score on the test that shows that you are going to be successful in that class. That is the only way you could take the class. If you don't take the AccuPlacer test, you can't take the CCP class, or if you don't get a certain score, you can't take the class. And even if you're planning on taking a bunch of CCP classes, still complete the CHS scheduling selection sheet, just because you never know what could happen. Maybe they don't offer a class at Lakeland or whatever college you're going to, or you don't pass the AccuPlacer test. So even if you can't take those courses, we have backup courses to put you in that you actually would like to take. And so important date, course registration dates. So the course registration on the IC, Infinite Campus, will open on Friday, February 19th. And it'll be available through Friday, February 26th. So you have some time to research, look through the program of studies where it breaks down each of these courses on the scheduling sheet. Try to pick some courses, have conversations with your parents, stop down to the guidance office and ask your counselor if you have any questions. Try to find some courses you would like to take as electives and also those alternate, those backup courses. And make sure you actually complete the registration during those dates because it's on a first come first serve basis. So if you don't get those in, you don't have a schedule as a counselor and the other counselors, we have to make sure that you have a full schedule like we talked about. So if you don't pick them, we might have to pick them for you or you have to wait at a later date in the summer and some of the classes you might wanna take could be full. So please, on February 19th through the February 26th, please complete the registration form, sign up for your classes, pick your top electives, make sure you have six classes all year. If it's a half year course, make sure you have a half and a half. Make sure it adds up to six periods and also pick some alternates just in case you can't get into your first choices. And that's the end of the presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to email, call, um, stop down to the office, uh, talk to your guidance counselor. We'll be happy to help you with any questions you may have. So I appreciate you watching today's videos and hearing the different things that you need to know about your grade level, your course selection sheets, along the lines with how to do this inside of Infinite Campus. Please be mindful of the timelines that they shared with you and be certain to do that by the time allotted. We have a lot of work to do on our end so that we can make sure that we start registering these classes and knowing what the master schedule could look like. Uh, and we'll be able to be certain of how that is uh, scheduled, not only for your teachers, but also you have a good chance of understanding what life will look like for you as you transition uh, into the summer months. I appreciate all that you do each and every single day. Be grateful and be you.